me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. The ridicule goes on. Harry's wife takes herself very seriously. She has no sense of humour, although her narcissism will tell her that she has a brilliant one, but we can all see, as a consequence of her behaviour, that she doesn't have one. When she does laugh, it's a fake, hollow laugh that's emitted. Furthermore, it shows in her responses to the jibes and ridicule that she's experienced that she doesn't respond with that, yes, that's very funny and move on, but rather doles out a pity play, claiming to be devastated, for instance, as a consequence of the South Park parody that took place. For a narcissist such as Harry's wife, who thinks that she's a very important and serious person, being ridiculed is a particular problem for her. It is, of course, challenge fuel. She's receiving fuel by way of people talking about her and ridiculing her, but... It's a challenge because it's suggesting that she's not sensible, not important enough, not statesmanlike. Furthermore, Prince Harry is an extension of her, and the fact that he has also been ridiculed is problematic for her because as an extension of her, it means that he, when he is ridiculed, it's in fact a ridicule of her also. Of course, her narcissism to deal with this will look to cut him loose by blaming him and saying they're laughing at you because of your idiotic disclosures from Spare. How dare you bring this ridicule on our household, you ginger idiot. However, the ridicule continues and it's problematic for her because of this image of purportedly being serious but also it's problematic for Harry because... With so much ridicule being directed at him, it increases the chances that she will not only start to distance herself from him, as we have seen in the earlier part of this year, where she wasn't engaged in the promotional work for Spare, that she has been less prominent, but also that it might hasten his ultimate disengagement. Because if they, through him, are being ridiculed again and again and again with plummeting popularity, her narcissism will see that he is the millstone around her neck and therefore will essentially encourage her to get rid of him by seeing him as the problem, by seeing that it's him that's caused the ridicule, that it's him that's invited all of these people to point and laugh and therefore he ought to be gotten rid of. The ridicule continues as reported by Newsweek, as Jack Royston tells us, Prince Harry's book, Spare, is being parodied in a frostbite and all comedy biography that exposes every shouting match, fist fight, betrayal, teddy bear, awkward hug and tear-stained wedding rehearsal, and all for privacy, according to publicity material. Spare Us, a harody, is published by Little Brown, owned by Hachette and was published on the 1st of April, how apt, and sends up the Prince's own tell-all memoir, which was published in January. The parody version has been written by Bruno Vincent, whose Enid Blyton parodies have drawn attention before, including the book Five on Brexit Island, which was a Christmas number one bestseller in Britain. The Prince has been the butt of the joke for some of America's most famous comedians since his book came out in January making a sharp pivot in the discussion surrounding Harry and Harry's wife in the United States. A press release promoting Spare Us read, He was born into an ancient powerful dynasty and, through no fault of his own, became one of the most recognisable men on the planet. His life was a constant barrage of press intrusion and manipulation. Until finally, he demanded that it stop in order to get the privacy he so craved, he has written a frostbite and all bark that goes deep inside the castle walls and exposes every shouting match, fist fight, betrayal, teddy bear, awkward hug and tear-stained wedding rehearsal for the world to feast their eyes on. All for privacy. This is his story. Despite their serious image, Harry and Harry's wife have been targets. Four comedians since the Prince's Bug told the world how he got frostbite on his penis during a 2011 trek across the North Pole. The real spare read, My penis was oscillating between extremely sensitive and borderline traumatised. The last place I wanted to be was Frostnipistan. 
A friend recommended him Elizabeth Arden Cream, but he described feeling uncomfortable about the choice because my mum used that on her lips. I found a tube, he wrote, and the minute I opened it, the smell transported me through time. I felt as if my mother was right there in the room. Then I took a smidge and applied it down there. Trevor Noah, who just three months earlier was a guest on Harry's wife's Spotify podcast, Archetypes, was among those to poke fun at the Prince during the Grammy Awards in February. While introducing British comedian James Corden, arsehole, he said, James Corden, arsehole, is a 12-time Emmy winner and the host of The Late Late Show. He's also living proof that a man can move from London to LA and not tell everyone about his frostbitten penis. Elsewhere, Harry's bug was mocked on South Park with a memoir by the Prince of Canada titled Wah! during an episode titled The Worldwide Privacy Tour. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Saturday Night Live and Chris Rock are also among those to mock Harry and Harry's wife since the book came out. Now, it's also interesting that this has been published by Newsweek and Jack Royston, who acts as a lieutenant for the success for Harry's wife in terms of pumping out material that is pro-Sussex. What might be read into the fact that he has given basically a list of all of the ridicule that Harry has been experiencing alongside another send-up as a consequence of the parody, Spare Us a Harody. Might it be that this is indicative of further work by Harry's wife to distance herself from her husband, having it done so that PR team instruct Jack Royston to write a hatchet piece detailing the various unfortunate behaviours of Harry, listing the various ridicules and putting it all on him, categorising them as being applicable to him and not her. Harry's wife barely gets a mention. It's all about Prince Harry, all about him being ridiculed. The only time Harry's wife is mentioned is in relation to having a serious view of themselves. But a lot of the material points to Harry being the problem. And it, to my mind, this is indicative of the steps that are being taken to distance her from Harry for the purposes of potential and forthcoming disengagement. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.